G'day, my name is Derek Hamer and I work for Sardi Aquatic Sciences in Adelaide, South Australia and I'm currently investigating the foraging ecology of Australian sea lions at the Bunda Cliffs which is inside the Great Australian Bight Marine Park. It's a bit of an adrenaline buzz, that's for sure. Once, when, you, when you're waiting at the top to go over you can kind of try and hide the, that sort of in-ground fear as much as you like but once your feet are dangling over the edge it's, uh, it's not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. We're not just looking for any animal to capture, we're, we're actually after adult breeding females. And the reason for this is because they provide the offspring for the next generation. And that literally makes them the most important section of, of the population, I guess, in terms of uh, the conservation of the species. I guess it's my job to, uh, to sneak up on the animal as best I can with a net uh, and ensure that I can get into a position where I can get the net over the animal as quickly and as quietly as possible. One of the challenges to working on these animals during the breeding season is that there's plenty of interested bulls that want to come up and see what's going on and also females that are, that are neighbours that might have young as well often get involved because they're looking out for their own pups and they might get a bit nervous about us being around. We've got a mobile anaesthetics machine that delivers uh, gas through a mask and uh, we've got a hole in the end of the net which we can open up which allows us to put the mask over the mouth of the animal, mouth and nose of the animal very quickly. Whilst it's asleep we make sure that uh, that its gums are a nice healthy pink colour and that it gets what's called capillary return. So when we push a finger on the gum, the capillaries fill up with blood again. That gives us an indication that uh, heart rate and blood pressure are nice and healthy. We use glue uh, to glue the base of the satellite transmitter to the, the hair on the back of the sea lion. The hair is about 10 to 12 millimetres long and it's really just a thin layer of glue on the base of the transmitter that just sticks to the, the couple of millimetres on the end. So it's very uninvasive. Once the animal's breathing um, atmospheric air again, it only takes about five or six minutes for the animal to first wake up. It's got uh, a, bit of, a bit of a wobble to it for the first few minutes after that, but essentially they recover very quickly and uh, the first thing that's on their mind is making sure that their pup is okay. So often what you'll see is that uh, the mother will start calling and that's often answered with a call from the pup. It's great to have a, a, a good team of people that know what they're doing and are, uh, are quite responsive. We, uh, we managed to get through the weekend without, uh, without a hitch, so no, it was fantastic. We got all the, the trackers out and, and uh, hopefully all the trackers are switched on and doing their thing and uh, we should have information coming in pretty shortly to see where they're going.